Come on up to the house. Prologue. Your stinking corpse I desire. It was late and it was dark. The low moon cast misshapen shadows across the garden, turning branches into ghostly tendrils and morphing the swing beneath the tree into a noose that floated on the wind. The light from the house was diluted by the thick glass of the bay windows and the heavy curtains that hid the occupant from the outside world. Somewhere, someone was screaming. The music grew slowly louder, Norwegian death metal setting the night on fire. It came from a first floor window that was stuck shut and covered with dust. Out in the garden again, a black cat meowed its way across the lawn and disappeared down the street, its preternatural eyes glowing green in the half-light. The inside of the house seemed empty. The dark hallway was deserted except for a dozen pairs of mismatched shoes and a coat stand that was overburdened with forgotten clothes that no one would ever wear again. The music floated down the stairs from the other side of a graffitied bedroom door that was plastered with magazine cutouts and hand-drawn logos for bands with names like Deathlust and Churchburner. A hand smashed against the door, followed by a hoarse voice that seemed to grow out of nowhere before peeking and fading away. Jim, it bellowed. Turn that rubbish down right now, you hear? Don't make me come in there. My brain is driving me insane. On the other side of the door, a metal bolt slid home. James Davis Sr. grabbed the door handle and rattled it, but it wouldn't budge. He drew back his fist and bashed it against the woodwork again, then growled at the moment of impact when the wood splintered and cut into his fist. Sticky droplets of his warm blood fell to the floor and sank between the gaps in the floorboards. The music grew louder. Meanwhile, Jenny Davis was trying to sleep. Her room was on the other side of the landing, but that didn't stop her older brother from pissing her off with his loud music and his bad attitude. Jenny sighed and rolled over onto her stomach, then buried her head beneath the pillow. It made no difference. For God's sake, she murmured, not again. It took her ten minutes to realise that James was playing the same song on a loop. It was hard to tell with the stuff he listened to. Most people wouldn't even call it music. She sighed again and picked up a book from her bedside table. Then she threw it at the wall and shouted, Jim, shut the hell up! Eating the flesh of a thousand corpses. There was no noticeable response. Mrs Davis was at home too. She was lying alone in the master bedroom, listening to the drama unfolding around her. She could hear her husband's fists as they pounded against the wooden door and his cries and curses as he failed to gain entrance. She thought about when James was just a kid, when she used to push him on the swings and watch him giggle as gravity took over. He'd been a quiet child, deep in thought even at an early age, but he'd never been a problem. Not like this. It was the house. She'd swear it. Ever since they'd moved in, things had changed. Her son had come out of his shell in the most unexpected way imaginable, and her husband had turned to drink after losing his job at the packaging plant. Mrs Davis stared at the ceiling and felt tears spring silently into her eyes. She let them roll down her cheeks and onto the bed, taking her mascara with them. Graham Davis, James's little brother, was dreaming about a colourless field of magical animals and mythical creatures when the music woke him up like it did every night. He rubbed his eyes, sat up in his bed and swayed slightly as he started to wake back up. He stuck his thumb in his mouth and started crying. James's room was small, smelly and full of junk. Old electronics parts, poor magazines with sticky pages and obscure LPs and concert tickets. It smelled like sweat and rotting food, two smells which worked their way into his hair and clothes, and he didn't care. He sat on the end of his bed, staring at the door with disdain in his eyes. From the other side, his father was still half-heartedly pounding away at it. James smiled grimly and stalked over to the computer desk to pick up his penknife. Then he walked over to the door. Hey, he shouted, wrapping his skinny knuckles against it. Fuck you! James ignored the muffled response and walked over to the window. It wouldn't open. It never had, not since they'd moved in. He tried it anyway and then collapsed defeated in his computer chair. Another one has to die. I've had enough of this shit, he murmured. Outside, on the landing, Mr Davis had renewed his assault, channeling his rage into the thick wooden door that stood between the two of them. That's it, he shouted, punching a hole in the woodwork. I'm coming in, you better be prepared for a beating, boy. Blood sucking cuntless numbs. The old man gripped the banister with a bruised fist and then kicked against the door, his heavy boots splintering the wood until he could reach inside to unlock it. He opened it and the music hit him in the face like a bulldozer. It was blasting out from an electric amplifier but the noise was nothing compared to the sight that greeted him. His son and heir was lying on the bed, covered in his own blood and bleeding out from the deep gashes to his wrists and throat. He was shaking silently in a seizure with a sadistic smile on his crumpled face. Jesus Christ, Jim Senior said. He ran over to the bed and cradled his son in his arms, trying to shake him back to life. James reached out with a bloody hand and tried to whisper, but his bulbous tongue hung loose and his vocal cords could only manage a dull rattle. Melissa! Jim screamed, clamping his hands around his son's bloody wrist to try to stop him from bleeding out. Melissa, where are you? Call an ambulance, you hear? 
Call an ambulance. <laughs>